Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Garage Band Weekly here on Studio Live Today. If it's your first time here, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. We do that through tips and tricks and tutorial videos and live shows just like this one. If that's your bag, consider subscribing. This is GarageBand Weekly. We'll be talking about some tips for your volume control in GarageBand, some rumors and news on new versions of iOS, new iPads, new iPhones, even new Macs, and a whole lot more. So stay tuned for the next around about 30 minutes, and we'll dive into all of those topics. Uh, this is the show before the show. The pre-show where I give you just a couple of minutes to grab a beverage, sit down, relax, and think of any questions you have because we do have a Q&A section in the show here. So if you do have questions, I've got answers or at least we've got a community here who can help us by answering some of those questions. So I'm going to have a little coffee. And then we're going to get ourselves set up and ready to go. Uh, if you've been watching the shows over the weekend, I've experimented with not using StreamYard, so I don't have the I don't have the comments to put up here in the branding and the logos. But the audio and video quality should be much much better. And again, because we're doing some live demos and some tips here around GarageBand today, I wanted to make sure we had good quality audio and video so that you can see and hear exactly what's going on. Uh, hello to the folks who are here live. We have uh, uh, Ian. Oh, yeah. Desolate Morning said, uh, need to catch the replay because you've got to run. That's totally fine. Uh, Jade Star is here. Tom Rochelle is here. Uh, Iridium is here. And SM Borthwick says, sorry, I missed the Q&A yesterday. I was out in the pub in a curry house. It was almost like real life. <laughs> well, isn't that awesome? Uh, it is nice that we have some almost real life stuff going on again. Uh, makes, uh, makes it feel a bit warmer down in the cockles, doesn't it? When you've got a little bit more reality and real life happening in some parts of the world. I know it's not the case everywhere right now. Uh, so I hope you are safe and well and things are going okay in your neck of the woods. Righty dokey, are we ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's strap in and get started with some Garage Band Weekly. So we kick off every week with the news and notes, a little bit about what's been happening in the world of GarageBand, Apple, iOS, and everything in between. So let's take a look at that. So a bit of a slow news week, to be honest. There's not a whole bunch that's brand new here, but we do have uh, iOS 13.6 has been out for a period of time. I haven't personally heard of a bunch of issues. There's always going to be some, but the basic apps that I use, so uh, LumaFusion, including the brand new version of LumaFusion, which I'm loving, uh, GarageBand, uh, all of the apps and all of the third-party plugins that I use, uh, none have caused any issue with 13.6. A couple of things I have heard is a little bit of hardware is not working anymore. A couple of folks have reached out and said that their lightning to USB adapters are no longer working. And you know my response to that, yeah, I know. You need to buy yourself a genuine Apple Lightning to USB 3 adapter because the cheaper ones simply don't work. Uh, the second thing is iOS 14. Uh, so the next beta, a lot of folks are showing off around the internet. Is there really going to be anything there for creators? I'm still not convinced that there's anything of significant value in iOS 14 for music and video creators. It does seem to just be a little bit of a enhancement. I think... Um, was it Jade that said, uh, someone here in the chat in a show recently said it's like the S update. So if you know Apple and you know things, there's the, like the new versions, like iPhone 10 will come and then 10S will come. iPhone 11 will come and then 11S will come. And around those S releases, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of brand, brand new stuff. It seems to be a little bit of rehash and refresh. So that's kind of what I'm thinking for the updates we're getting for iOS 14. That being said, the other thing is that some rumors have popped out around Apple's September event coming up, and those rumors include an iPhone 12. So maybe, maybe we will see a jump straight to an iPhone 12. We're also rumored to have new Apple Watches, the Series 6, uh, new Air Power, and new iPad. And then, here's the weird thing, an October event that they're speculating, and when they, the, the internet rumor mill, are speculating that could uh, could have new Macs with the new Silicon being announced, not launched, but announced, uh, a new iPad Pro. Again, 2021 iPad Pro, we had a 2020, I'll believe it when I see it, and Apple Glass. So if you don't know what Apple Glass is, go and look it up. I'm, yeah, I'm not convinced about this one either. Uh, remember Google Glasses? Remember, what was it, Instagram that had those weird paper? I don't know. Uh, I, 
I like the concept of wearable technology. Obviously, you know, I use a Fitbit. I know a lot of people use the Apple Watch. But, oh, gee, something that you put on as glasses and that has data and information. Don't we have headaches enough already from having this in front of our face 24-7? Do we really want something that's, you know, popping up data and information right in front of our eyes? I don't know. Maybe you're super excited for Apple Glass. I don't know. We're going to jump into a rant of the week in a quick moment, uh, but we will jump back over here and say good day to a few more folks here. Uh, hello to the Von Birch Music Group. Uh, we've got Valium FM, who is here. <laughs> good evening to you, sexy people. And uh, Machu, what's up? Uh, uh, hello. I hope you're doing well. Uh, yes, if you do have questions or comments as we go through the show, please throw them down in the chat. And if you're watching on the replay, then, uh, yeah, you can leave a comment and uh, I will circle back. I spend a lot, a lot of time down in the comments. Speaking of comments, not really, but I needed a segue. Speaking of other things, uh, over on the Facebook group, GarageBand Users Facebook group, which is a great place to go. You should go there and check it out if you haven't before. There, there, there was a post there that really kind of sparked a lot of people's interest and intrigue, and it was from Paul English, uh, and he said, uh, "As far uh, are we only as good as our last projects? So what do you think? Are we only as good as our last GarageBand project? Should we be judged on the last thing we did? I don't know. It's an interesting one. As someone who has been learning GarageBand for a bit over five years, I look at every project as a learning experience. But am I going to say that the very last project I did was the best? No, not necessarily. Uh, over time, it grows. It's kind of like anything. If you track something over time, there's going to be swings and roundabouts. There's going to be ups and downs. It's actually, in my personal opinion, the overall trend. So if you're trending up, if you're learning more, yeah, you're going to have some absolute clangers. I've had some projects and I've had some songs that I've gotten halfway through and I've just simply abandoned because I'm like, this is a piece of dog turd and I don't want to do anything with this anymore. That being said, that doesn't discourage me for going on to the next project. What I think is interesting with this, and this is my rant of the week, by the way, not surprisingly, what I do think is interesting with this is that there are a lot of folks who do dine out, and I mentioned this in the show yesterday, they dine out on the number of years they've been doing something or the number of years they've been in an industry. So their expertise is based in, I've been in the recording industry for 37 years. And you're like, that's great. What have you done in the last year? <laughs> and you look at their profile and they're not releasing music. They're not producing music. They're not making content. They're basically just sitting in forums and telling other people how many years they've been in the recording industry. So I think that there is, there's definitely a challenge that some people hit this level, hit this plateau, get super comfortable and then don't continue progressing and learning. And I think that's super dangerous. So in terms of uh, are you only as good as your last sort of last project or recent work, yeah, the old what have you done for me lately does have to come into things. So if you are listening to people, I, I, I rec recommend this a lot of the time because there's a lot of people that will tell you what to do. And if you've heard me rant before, I, I really would love if we heard more in my opinion and in my experience because whatever the recommendation is, in my opinion and in my experience at the front of it, just tells people that you've got some humility and some level of humbleness that you're not going to say, yeah, this is definitely what you should do. This is what I did, so therefore this is what you should do. No, this is what I did and it worked for me. I'm going to pass on that knowledge and information to you so that when you try it, you might have a little bit of a head start. Feel free though, though to use something completely different. And uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a quick anecdote of this. So um, when I interviewed Stu Cash recently, um, Stu and Andy, part of the Indigo Sunsets, and he said to me, oh, Pete, I, I reached out to you and asked you about microphones, and you said, you know, the Audio-Technica AT2020, or if you're more of a budget, the Samson CO1. So I bought, bought a Rode NT1A, completely disregarding you, and I said, awesome, do you like it? Yes, great, done. It's the same with GarageBand. People say, oh, I don't want to use GarageBand, it's a baby toy, I, don't, I, want to, I can only use um, Cubase, or I can only use Pro Tools, and I'm like, are you making good music? Yes, fan bloody tastic do your thing, keep going. I'm not precious about what you use. And that is a good segue because today's episode is brought to you by me, again, by Studio Live Today and the Studio Live Today gear guide. So if you do want my recommendations, in my opinion, in my experience, head over to studiolivetoday.com slash gear and there you can pick up gear for your garage band recording. The good news there is that everything there has been used or recommended to me by people that I trust, and all of it is class compliant, meaning you can plug it into your Mac or PC, but you're also going to have luck plugging it into your iPhone or your iPad. 
That is our rant of the week. Uh, we are going to jump into my tip of the week, and I've got a few tips for you. We're talking volume hacks today, so that should be a lot of fun. But before we do, a few more folks who have slipped in here in the back door, uh, and we'll say good day to them. Uh, we have Desolate Morning is back. Uh, Six String Gunner is here. I'm Ad Izar. Uh, Tom Rochelle says Apple Glass will probably be big in 10 years, like when no one thought iPad would sell. Fair point. Absolutely fair. We did the video last week around the iPad release and the fact that nobody thought an iPad would be something that people want. Now I use it every day for almost everything. So maybe, maybe you're spot on and maybe in 10 years time, I'm going to be sitting here wearing my Google Glass, Google Glass, Apple Glass. See, I'm getting confused already. My Apple Glass and just like tapping on the side. I'll be like, oh, hang on. I've just got to record a, a song idea. Tap. Do, 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 and that like throws it into music memos and then I open it up and it puts it, anyway, the future will definitely be different <laughs> and I'm more than happy to be wrong. I actually, I love being wrong because it means that you've made a stand, right? I know I sit on the fence a lot, but I love being wrong because I'm going to give my opinion, again, my opinion, my experience, and then when something different happens, I just go, cool, that's great. So for example, a lot of people are saying logic is coming to iOS like in September and I don't quite believe it. If it does, I'm going to be so happy. Like yesterday in the show, I recorded like a nice sound bite so that I can actually just play that and then come back over the top in a month's time and say, I was wrong and I'm happy. Uh, hello, we've got Emilio here. I hope you are doing well, my friend. Uh, Stu, Stu Cash, just as I was doing selling, telling an anecdote about Stu, he pops on in. Uh, Patrick Chandler is here as well. And thank you to Jade, doing a wonderful job doing the uh, moderating here on the show as per usual. Should we get in and check out some actual GarageBand stuff? I think we should. Let's see if my uh, technology is working here. If I can, boom, there we go. There is my... There is my garage band, and we're going to talk volume today. So yesterday, oh, don't do that. <laughs> Undo is your friend. Tap. All right. Uh, we're talking volume. So yesterday, I recorded this. Uh, I recorded it here live on the channel. If you missed the show, go back and watch it. It was a lot of fun. Hopefully, you got some value seeing my process. Again, it won't be the same as your process, and you probably won't want to do things the same as I do, but you got to see what it was. And I'm at the point of mixing now. And when you go to mix in GarageBand, there's actually a couple of cool things that you can do. Well, many cool things you can do that are going to help you out. Some volume related hacks. So we're going to show these here now. The number one that I use for volume hacks is something called Clip Gain. And this is handy because instead of using your fader over here and having to slide that up and down, you'll notice that this track, we have three different sections here. What if I wanted, so in fact, you can see this, this last section looks like it's a little bit too quiet. So I'd want the volume up a little bit louder to bring us home. But here's the problem. I don't want these to go louder. What do I do? I use clip gain. So to use clip gain, we tap on this one, we tap again, and then we come up here to settings. And then look at this. We've got this magical clip gain here. But what you'll notice is it says three regions there because what have I done? I've accidentally had all of these selected at the same time. So you can multi-select here in GarageBand. You can select multiple things and change it for all. Or if I want to change just this one, look at this. I come in here and say I want to boost this by maybe 4 dB. I can do that there. And then if we come back to here, just this part's going to be boosted. So if we come in here and we play this part, it'll come in. Here's my volume. Turn and walk away, cause you don't care what can... And there you go, that lead part is cutting through much nicer now. Anyway, and you just don't... And if we want to make it insane, if we come in here and go to settings, we can boost it a whole bunch. And then, if we play again... Don't understand it because you're part of so how cool is that clip gain volume something very handy here and something that i use all the time let's just drop that down or i'm gonna be mixing this later and go why on earth did i mix that so loud uh radio let's go with our next one and it's automation so automation is another great way to balance out your volume. So again, you know you can use your slider here, but especially for things like vocals, if you've got a particular word or something that you want to enhance. So we'll come into our vocal here, we'll solo it, and let's just say that at the end of here, this last word was not loud enough and we want to boost it up. So we'll hit the play button. No one wants to believe it Cause you're part of the one person. So that last 1%, what if we wanted that a little louder than the rest of it? Well, no problem. We tap right here on the icon. Don't tap out on the waveform, tap on the icon. We go to automation, we tap on that one, and then we can turn on automation by tapping this little button here. 
things will turn, well, won't go yellow yet because we have no points, but we can slide on in the top right. And then when we add our points in, so if we go here and where are we? We'll zoom out a little bit. We want this last word here to be louder. So we can add a point there. We can tap and add a point there. And then we'll do the same at the end, add two points like that. Then if we turn off our automation in the top, look what we can do. We can just drag this up and we can increase the volume for just that part. So this gives us the ability to have a sound like this. You don't want to believe it Cause you're part of the one person And that's cool because the, the music kicks back in there. So this is sort of uh, without the, the music <laughs> a cappella, and then this is where the music comes back in. So we may want to do that. The other cool thing we can do with automation is that we can use it to remove silences or breath sounds between words. So if we come down here, we could do a little uh, triangle of destiny. And this is my way of just dropping down a breath sound. So if we come here and we take a listen to this. Your mind up to the evidence. You so again, you don't have to go nuts with this stuff, but it's an option you can use. You can use it to cut out big bits of silence, use it for breath control. Automation is the bomb. Uh, another thing that is great, a volume hack is merging. So if you've got a really quiet part particular, so say this, uh, this bass part here, it's too quiet. Instead of having to turn it up and keep cranking the volume, if we want to normalize the volume of this, we can actually use the merge function. I'll show you how. So again, we tap right here on the icon and we tap on the merge button. And then we select just this one. Now you can select multiple tracks and it's gonna merge all of those into one stereo track. So that can be really cool if you wanna save on tracks. But for this one, we will merge just this one with itself. It's gonna go away and do its merging magic. What it's basically doing is exporting, normalizing, and then re-importing all in one move. And look at that. Now we've got this nice track. We can turn the volume down because it's normalized. And here's our bass. Bring it back in our mix. And you see the world, there is nothing that... And as opposed to having that little waveform before, it all it's done is increase the volume. It hasn't done compression or limiting or anything fancy. It's just turned up the volume so we can see the waveform, makes it easier to mix, easier to edit. So we'll leave it like that. The other thing we could do is say we've got these guitars, these left and right guitars. At the moment, if we solo them, they sound like this. We could also use merge to merge these together. So if we tap on there and we tap merge, this time if we select the two and hit the merge button, look what happens. We had one guitar and like magic, it'll merge. It'll do its thing. It's taking a little longer this time because it's got to merge two files into one stereo file. And there you go. It's put both of those guitars into this one stereo file. So if we play these two together, this is our two guitars now and this is our bass. Pretty cool, yeah. Great way to save on tracks. If you layered up a bunch of backing vocals and you don't necessarily need each individual track, you can use that to actually get there. Um, the other one, one final one that I'm gonna show you here is probably my favorite trick. I use this all the time, and that is the master volume hack. So this is how we can actually change and adjust the master volume without using the master slider here. Why would you wanna do that? Well, take a look at this vocal. Now that we've added automation, look what's happened to our volume slider. It's yellow, doesn't go up and down anymore. So how do we control the volume? We use this trick. We tap right here again. You notice that a lot of stuff is right here on the on our, uh, our item here. So we tap, oh no, we don't, don't mind me. I was, I was gonna merge again. <laughs> This time we're going to go up to the top. We're going to go up to our mixer icon. We're going to go to plugins and EQ, and we're going to enable the visual EQ here. Now we're not going to use any EQ, but what you'll notice about your EQ is over here on the right hand side, we have this, a gain slider. So we can actually turn up or down the gain to actually change just the gain for this track. So if we found that our vocal wasn't cutting through, but we've already added automation, let's just overdo it here. If we add 10 dB of gain on that particular slider, now when we play, like what you're seeing and you don't like. And you can see there that we're way overdoing it. So we'd actually dial that down. So let's say we want it to actually cut 5 dB. Yep, same deal. We just drop it down over there. Now when we play, like what it means. 
and you're good to go. One final thing though that you can use with this is the FX master track trick. So let's just say that we've got our entire song together here and we get to the end, we've got a bunch of automation, we've got a bunch of merging, everything's going on. And then we realize that actually we want everything to be three or four dB quieter. Well, the thing we could do here is we tap on the FX button. So the FX button up in the top and you're thinking, Pete, why am I adding FX? Don't worry, it'll all make sense. Just hit record. And you don't want <laughs> yeah, sorry, I just wanted to have some fun with that. But now if we come down here, you'll notice we've got FX on here. Now, we don't actually want it to do that repeating, although that was kind of fun. So we'll just delete this out. But now what we've got is an FX track. And look what we got over here. Visually Q. You got it. Now we can just tap on this one. We can adjust our volume up and adjust our volume down. And this is for our entire mix. So let's just play back our mix. Can turn our mix down. And we can turn our mix up. And this is really handy, especially when you get to the end of a mix and everything's still too loud. And when you're exporting, it's pumping or it's clipping or it's doing something nasty there. If you want to remove that, well, yeah, you add the FX track, turn everything down. It means you don't have to come back and do it manually and individually on every single track. There you go. Some volume hacks that are going to help you with your mixing in GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad. Let's come on back here. Uh, I, I get asked a lot about those and uh, I did do a video about these a while ago, but I thought it would be a good tip to do here because I know a lot of folks tune into this show each week. You're mixing in GarageBand. You can take those away, hopefully, and uh, get some value. Do you have any other tips, any other volume-related tips? One that I do want to cover in the future is how to uh, how to cross-fade between two tracks because I get asked that a lot. If you're doing a vocal recording, how do you make sure if you've got two sort of takes and you want to cross-fade between them? So, uh, But I thought that needed it its own separate video. So we'll do that in a separate video. Are there any questions? Uh, if your folks are here live and you have a question, then uh, please throw that question in front and throw it in there. Uh, Stu says, uh, probably a daft question. Anyone know once you put loads of automation on a track how to lift the volume rather than bit by bit? Uh, Tom Rochelle says, Stu, you can adjust the volume of the track with the automation <laughs> with the visual EQ like Pete just demonstrated. So I think I answered your question before I even saw it there. Hopefully uh, that helps. Gary Hubs, is that a Henrik Lundqvist jersey? It is indeed. King Henrik is, uh, is my hero. He's uh, not only a very attractive Swedish man, but he's a bloody good goalie as well. Uh, so yes, I'm rocking my my Rangers retro uh, vintage heritage, whatever it's called, uh, jersey today. Uh, nicely spotted. Uh, <laughs> you could only see a zero. Yes, it is. It's the thirty. It's the Lundqvist, which is a, it's the goalie cut, which means it's uh, nicer for me because uh, yeah, got a little bit of extra. Got ten kilo, ten kgs of uh, of COVID sitting right here. Uh, Righty doki, Sion. Hello to you. Who's made it here last minute? Uh, I don't think we've got any other questions, so we'll uh, we'll roll on over and finish things out here. So the plugin of the week, I didn't want to show you a plugin of the week, but I wanted to show you plugins of the week because uh, I got asked this week about the peak limiter in GarageBand and doing mastering in GarageBand. So if we jump back over to the iPad, now I'm going to have to remember where, <laughs> where the setting is for these uh, and I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, if you want to add 15 free plugins and you don't already have them in GarageBand, I'll show you what they are first and then I'll see if I can remember how to do them. If we come in here in a plugins and EQ and we'll go edit and we'll just uh, we'll move and hearts tuning. I won't need that, he says, famous last words. And if we add in here and go to audio unit extensions, down the bottom here, take a look at the, all these AU ones, all these orange AU plugins. Now, these are the audio unit plugins that we can enable in our GarageBand settings. So you, if you don't have these, all these 15 Apple plugins, they're all very cool. I've done videos about a bunch of them and you can enable them right in your GarageBand settings. Now, I have to remember there's two GarageBand setting places. I'll see if I can remember where they are. Are they here in advanced? No, which tells me that they're probably in the other GarageBand settings section. So I'll take you in to the hidden section. I just need to uh, take you off the screen there for a moment so I can come over here. So I'm not going to show you anything nefarious or anything on my screen that I shouldn't. Uh, scroll on down. Here we are. Uh, is this the right spot? Yes, it is. Right. So uh, I can bring the screen back on over here now. 
like so. So this is the other section. So in your settings app in iOS, in your iPhone or iPad, you've actually got a bunch of these hidden GarageBand settings that aren't actually in the GarageBand app, but they're here in your general settings. So here you've got your, your knob gestures. <laughs> Sorry, uh, folks in the UK will uh, will find that funny. Uh, the way that you handle your knob is uh, is here. So whether it's automatic, linear, or you swing it around in a circular fashion, which I believe is called the helicopter, um, so you can control how knobs behave. Sorry, I'm getting a bit uh, getting a bit crazy here. It's the end of a long weekend. Uh, we've got crosstalk protection, which I recommend putting on if you're getting feedback from your guitars. We've got automatic recording length if you want to always record as long instead of just eight bars. We've got support for MPE MIDI controllers, the keyboard note labels, which I don't have on on this iPad, so I'm going to turn them on because I like them. But this is the one that we want, the enable iOS effects plugins. If this isn't on, turn it on and then reload your GarageBand. So if we come back into GarageBand, turn it off and then turn it back on and then uh, you will have all of those plugins ready to go. So if you've been watching me do stuff and you're like, why don't I have all those little orange plugins that Pete has? Well, that's how you get them. Go into your settings, find GarageBand and then turn them on there. Hopefully, if you haven't already done that, I know many of you would have, you've probably seen the videos before, but if you haven't, hopefully that helps you out. Righty dokie, we'll check in if we've got any final comments or questions and then we'll continue on. Uh, nope, nothing, which is good. We will uh, finish out here. So the resource of the week this week, I'm going to be very, very uh, self-serving here because once again, uh, this show is not sponsored. <laughs> this is all this is all sponsored by me, by Studio Live Today, which is me. And uh, today's show was brought to you by the Studio Live Today Gear Guide. It has just been revamped, in fact. So uh, if you want to head on over to the gear guide, you can go to studiolivetoday.com slash gear. Let's just quickly show you what it looks like if you do go to studiolivetoday.com slash gear, if you're in the market for some gear for your garage band recordings, when you go there, it looks like this. You see me pointing at things and pretending to play guitar. And then I've made it super simple at the top here. So if you are just shopping and you're not after something particular, but you want to support the channel, all you need to do is come in here, pick your country, pick your retailer, and these all take you in to the affiliate link version of that. So wherever you're buying your gear, if you just want to choose something and go buy it, if you use these links, then they will break off a small chunk and send it to me. I've then got my whole setup here. So if you want to just go out and buy my entire studio, you can go and do that here with my whole setup, including my piano, my guitars, my uh, USB interfaces, mixers, all the rest of it. And then we break it down section by section. So you can come here and see what I recommend. And as I said, the beautiful part is all of these have been used by me or by someone that I know and trust, meaning that they work and that they work with GarageBand on your Mac for sure and on your iOS device as well, because they're all class compliant, meaning that they'll all work with your adapters and all work with your Apple products. Thank you folks for being here. I hope you enjoyed the show and got a few tidbits of information or just had some fun and enjoyed yourself. Uh, head over to the gear guide or just to studiolivetoday.com if you want to check out some more. Uh, that's the end of the weekend of live. But of course, we have the daily videos coming out every day this week. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Do all those YouTube things that help you keep up to date with what's going on around here. Uh, I believe Jade is doing a live show today. If I'm wrong, Jade, correct me. But uh, I think you've got a live show coming up today. I saw in the feed, so that'll be in about 30 minutes time. I'll be lining up for that. I'll grab my wheat bix and have a shower and then I'll be back to watch Jade. Too much information, Pete. Thank you for being here, folks. Have a great week. I'll see you real soon. Bye.